Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new 2018 Tyrants 630 quadcopter from Dayton. In this video I'm going to go over its features, show you how to set it up and then head outdoors and test it out. The 2018 Tyrants line of quadcopters is based on three models. First of all the 630 which is the one I've got which is a 6 inch quadcopter that supports 4S LiPo batteries. The other two are the 530 and the 540 models which are both 5 inch quadcopters. The 530 supports 4S LiPo batteries and the 540 supports up to 6S LiPo batteries. These three models are plug and play models which means they don't come with any receiver and you will have to provide your own one. Inside the box first of all we can find this basic unpacking guide which pretty much tells you that you shouldn't change the default settings. In addition it also comes pre-configured for SBUS. I'm actually going to use a different receiver, the Crossfire Nano RX with this quadcopter so of course I will have to change the settings. It also tells you how to set up the driver if it's not already installed and that you shouldn't put any propellers on the quadcopter before everything is configured and of course this is correct to every quadcopter. Be careful because these propellers can be very dangerous. So this is everything we've got inside the package. First of all we can find the quadcopter itself. As you can see everything is assembled and all you have to do is just to add your own receiver. In addition we got four propellers. These are the Gemfen. 6042 propellers and you only get in one set so of course it's advisable to order a couple of more sets. You also get in one set of Dayton set of stickers, some zip ties, three high quality velcro straps with a metal buckle with the Dayton logo. These are not identical and the length is different so we've got this one which is the shortest one, then we've got the medium one and also the longest one which is very long and these battery straps would enable you to use batteries with different sizes. We're also getting these two battery anti-skid stickers and they are going to be located over here. This quadcopter is designed to mount the battery on top. We're also getting some wires, four nuts for the motors, a spare camera mount and also a simple linear antenna from Amway with an SMA antenna connector. Now let's have a look on the quadcopter itself. First of all on the center we can find these two boards from Dayton. The bottom one is a 4-in-1 50 ampere EC that supports up to D-Shot 600. Above it we can find the furry F405 flight controller that features an F4 processor and comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.3.0. As for motors, this quadcopter is using the Edge Racing 2308 1950 KV motors. These are labeled with the Dayton brand but I assume that they are manufactured by Sunny Sky. On the front we can find the Runcam Micro Spera 2 FUV camera and on the back the TBS Unify VTX that supports up to 800mW output strength. The VTX is built into this board which has a capacitor, a buzzer and we can also find two more capacitors, one which is connected directly to the ESC, this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor and we can also find another ESC which is connected to the flight controller. In terms of dimensions, this quadcopter weighs about 363 grams without adding the ready receiver, the FUV antenna and of course without any battery. So after adding these items, the weight is going to be closer to 600 grams. In addition, the distance between these two motors is about 28 centimeters. The distance between the front motors to the back ones is about 17.5 centimeters. And the distance between the front and also between the back motors is about 19.5 centimeters. This quadcopter is not using a unibody button plate, which means the arms are replaceable, so in case you're going to break them, you'll be able to change them separately. However, this looks like very durable arms. The thickness of each arm is 6 millimeters, so I don't think they're going to break easily. In addition, the thickness of the top plate is about 2 millimeters, which is the same thickness of the button plate. Now by the way, as you can see, we have a lot of space on the front and that one added another 20x20 20 20 mounting option, which means you can mount, for example, the Runcam Split Mini 2 camera or the Cardex Turtles camera. So you can place the board over here and this quadcopter supports only micro cameras. You can see that you won't be able to fit mini or standard size cameras. But anyway, the Runcam Split Mini 2 and also the Cardex Turtle using a micro FEV camera form, so it's not going to be an issue. Dayton does not provide with this quadcopter any mount for an HD camera so we'll have to either buy it separately or 3D print your own one. You can also find that over here we have these ventilation holes which are great because the quadcopter is advancing in this way so it's going to keep the VTX cool which is very important. The next thing that I'm going to do is to go over beta flight settings and head outdoors and test it out. 
I hope you would enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, I can tell you that if you're in the market for a good six inch plug and play quadcopter, the Daton GT Tyrant 630 is a great option. It will allow you to simply add a Crossfire 9 receiver. And then because the TBS Unify VTX is a great VTX, it will allow you to also use it as a long range quadcopter. I got to about one kilometer without any issues with the video. So this is pretty impressive. These motors are also very powerful, but the problem that they are very power hungry and I only got about five minutes of flight time using the CNHL 1500 mAh LiPo battery. Pay attention that you will need to adjust the voltage scale because the default one is not correct. So you'll have to set it to 111, otherwise the displayed voltage on your OSD is just going to show the wrong value. And then you will think you have only two minutes of flight time, but actually you can get much more out of your LiPo battery. I am going to run some more tests using this quadcopter and I would like to see how it's going to perform with 5 inch propellers and I'm going to see how it will affect the flight time. And in addition, I talked to Dayton and they told me that when using 5 inch propellers, I can also use this quadcopter with 6S type of batteries. So I'm also going to see how it's going to affect the performance. Finally, I can also tell you that the build quality of this quadcopter is great and I do like the fact that it enables you to add a micro HD camera quite easily because we have this 20 by 20 millimeters mounting on the front of the quadcopter. I do think that that one should include these landing pens in the kit because the mounting for the battery is on top. So these are pretty cheap and always handy. So I'm going to put a link to it in the description box down below and you should definitely consider it because it's going to help you to protect your quadcopter. So you're going to see more of this quadcopter in the future, so stay tuned. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos, and goodbye.